Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on cell division and stem cells. So we're gonna cover the two different types of cell division. If you're only doing the foundation paper, then you only need the first one because meiosis is only in the higher tier paper. And we're also gonna talk a bit about stem cells, what they are and why they are needed. All right, and so the first thing we're going to discuss is why do cells need to divide? Okay, so why divide at all? Well, we all started from a sperm and an egg cell um, joining, forming a single um, cell, which was the embryo, or the zygote, which then forms the embryo, okay? The zygote then divides and divides, and what you get at the end is the embryo, which will eventually become the fetus, and so on and so on, and then you're born, okay? The reason why um, that's possible, and we are now made up of trillions of cells, is because of cell division, and so cell division is pretty much essential. Okay, and so there are two types, and they are meiosis and mitosis, okay? The first we're going to discuss is mitosis, because we all need to know what this is. Now, if you have a cell, let's just draw um, something like this, okay? And inside the cell you have a nucleus, and inside that nucleus um, are your chromosomes, okay? Chromosomes, of course, are the packages of DNA, okay? We'll go into those in more detail in the next video, but they are basically strands of DNA containing a lot of genes, okay? If you have a cell, which quite simply looks like this, if you divide by mitosis, you will end up with, uh, eventually, two cells which are identical, okay? Which I'll draw down here two cells which are identical to the original one. All right, okay, they're genetically identical. Now, the way that that happens is all of the DNA or all of the genetic material in the cell is multiplied, okay? So you end up with a cell that will look like this. So it's got double the amount of DNA, which are represented by these sticks, okay, chromosomes, as the original. And this then splits into two cells which are identical to the original cell okay so those cells are genetically identical to the first cell and that is how mitosis works okay most cells so most uh, i'm actually going to say all cells aside from sex cells so sperm and egg are formed via mitosis. Okay, so mitosis is the way that all cells divide because they divide and form identical cells as a result. Okay, meiosis will form the sex cells and that is a separate kind of division. And you might now be wondering why um, we have obviously different types of cells. So you've got nerves, uh, which are made up of neurons. You've got skin cells, you've got blood cells, etc., etc. They're clearly not identical to each other, okay? But genetically they are. And what happens is a process known as differentiation, all right? If you, if you do maths, this is a very different type of differentiation to the one that you're doing maths, all right? This is cell differentiation, okay? Now, differentiation is the process of unspecialized cells, okay, unspecialized cells, we'll go on to define these in a second, forming specialized cells. Okay, now an unspecialized cell, okay, is one that we call a stem cell, right? So these are stem cells. All right, and if we go back up, they might just look something like uh, the original one here at the top. They might just be blobs, right? They're just uh, sort of spherical. They don't have any distinguishing um, features to them. For example, a, a neuron has a massive long uh, protrusion at the end of it. Uh, a sperm cell, obviously you've seen a sperm cell. Um, they obviously look very different. Um, and that is a result of specialization, okay? But a stem cell is an unspecialized cell, okay? And what that means is it is a cell which can... Um, differentiate, differentiate, okay, let's neaten that up, E8 to form uh, other types 
of cells. Okay. For example, a stem cell might differentiate and it can form a blood cell, all right? It could also differentiate and form a neuron. It could also differentiate and form a cell in the liver or in the kidneys um, or a muscle cell, okay? It can form all different types of cells. However, a specialized cell, okay, a specialized cell is one which has been differentiated, okay? It's already differentiated. So it's already differentiated. Okay, and it cannot form other types of cells. Okay, now that doesn't mean that specialized cells can't divide by mitosis. They certainly can. But for example, if you have a liver cell, if it divides by mitosis, it will form a liver cell. Okay, there's no question it can't form a nerve, it, uh, a neuron, sorry. It can't form a blood cell, etc., etc., right? It will form a liver cell. Whereas if you have a, se a stem cell, it could differentiate into any other type of cell, all right? And so that's the difference between a specialized and an unspecialized cell. All right, now where do we find these stem cells? Okay, so there are two different types. So stem cells can be embryonic embryonic stem cells okay and these can form any type of cell okay so they can form any type of cell okay and there are also adult stem cells Okay, and they are found in the bone marrow, mainly. Okay, and they can only form some types of cells. For example, the bone marrow is used to replace blood, because blood um, cells need to be replaced. Obviously, you can lose blood, and blood cells eventually will break down. So you need to replace them with new blood, and that is what those stem cells are for. However, they will not form things like neurons, okay? They can't divide into things like neurons. Embryonic stem cells, on the other hand, can. They can divide into any type of cell, right? So when you are an embryo, you have all these embryonic stem cells, which are found within the embryo, and certain portions of the embryo will develop into certain different things. And that is how your body forms, okay? They differentiate into different types of cells, okay, in an ordered fashion, which lead to the formation of an organism. Now, this makes embryonic stem cells extremely interesting and useful when it comes to research and future um, uses in medicine, right? For example, if you could grow embryonic stem cells to form a new organ, you would reduce the need for organ donors, okay? Especially if you use your own stem cells. If you used your own stem cells, it means that the organ would actually be yours technically, which means that it wouldn't be rejected, okay? Because if you accept an organ from someone else, uh, your body fights it off, it rejects it. But if, it the, if they were your own stem cells, then that wouldn't be the case, okay? So there are all sorts of... Um, uses for stem cells. Now there are problems with them as well. For example, how do we get the embryonic stem cells? We have to take them out of an embryo, okay? Often this leads to the destruction of the embryo, which means that you're actually killing something which could have turned into a, uh, a human being or another animal if you're uh, using animal stem cells, okay? Um, and that is, of course, considered ethically wrong. In a lot of places, it's illegal to use embryonic stem cells. Not all places, um, but the laws on it are very strict. So there are many problems with embryonic stem cells, but there are also many future uses, okay? Another thing, um, which is a more recent development, is that we can turn cells into uh, stem cells, okay? Or you can turn adult stem cells into something resembling an embryonic stem cell, okay? So you can uh, supply it with certain things which allow it to turn certain genes on and off, okay? Because turning genes on and off uh, causes either specialization or unspecialization, right? And that allows them to be able to form different types of cells. For example, if you had an adult stem cell which is only capable of forming things like blood, okay? 
you could then supply it with things which turn on and turn off certain genes, making it more like an embryonic stem cell. Now, it means that if you, if you add other things, you could cause it to differentiate. And it might be able to differentiate into something like a muscle cell or even something like a neuron, okay? Whereas if it was just an adult stem cell and you hadn't done anything to it, uh, to start with, it wouldn't be able to do that, okay? And so in future, we hope that that uh, becomes easier and we're able to form any type of cell from things like adult stem cells or even better from cells which weren't originally stem cells, okay, like skin. Because if you can turn those into stem cells and then use those to grow new organs, that would eliminate the need for things like organ donors, okay, and that would be ideal. Okay, now lastly, we have meiosis. Meiosis. All right. Now, meiosis is at the other type of cell division which forms the gametes. Okay, so I'm going to write here formation of gametes. And the gametes are the sex cells. All right, so that's we're talking about the sperm and the egg. Okay. So where does this happen? Well, it happens in specific places, for example, in females. So I'm going to write in females. It happens in the ovaries. Okay, and in males, it happens in the testes. All right, so that's where you're going to form the eggs in the females and the sperm in the males. Now, what happens? I'm going to use the same kind of diagram, uh, simplistic diagram as before. If you start off with a cell, Okay, what happens is it will multiply um, its genetic material just like it does in my in mitosis. Okay, so you'd end up with double, like so. Right, now, what happens then is it divides just like in mitosis and you form two cells with the same amount of DNA as the original. Okay, but then those two cells divide again. Okay, which forms four cells okay, with half the amount of genetic information as the original. Now, obviously, this is a simplified diagram. In humans, for example, our cells have 46 chromosomes, okay? So 23 pairs of chromosomes. So rather than the two you can see in this top uh, cell here, you would have 46 and you would double, okay, to make 92. Then you would half to make 46, and then you half again, and each of these cells, so the sperm or the egg, would have 23 chromosomes. All right, and this actually introduces a variation because it's random as to which, um, which chromosomes go into each cell. So you'll either get your mother's copy or the father's copy, right, going into each cell. And then when these are fertilized by, um, for example, if it was an egg and it's fertilized by the sperm, that sperm cell will mix its 23 chromosomes, if it's a human, with the egg's 23 chromosomes, making 46 chromosomes in total. And therefore, the, uh, the new cell, so the new uh, zygote, which is the start of the embryo, is genetically different from the mother and from the father because you've mixed up the DNA exactly half each. Okay? And that is meiosis. That's how it works. And that is why it introduces uh, genetic variation. All right, now I'm going to stop there. Uh, if there's anything that's still unclear, please do feel free to comment in the box below or send me a direct email using the link and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one.